This is part two of the 1962 Zenith black and white Space Command console television. In this video we're going to repair and make working again this TV and we'll start by addressing the vertical issue, replacing capacitors and continuing with our diagnosis and checking out the remote function and doing some testing there and I'll also include some interesting old um, interviews and documentary stuff on the television at the very end of the video. So in the day these capacitors were considered the best. That's why Zenith used them. The Black Beauties were just considered the best at the time. And although our chassis that we're working on is a Zenith 16F28, this one sure looks the same. And one of the reasons they outline here is, um, let me see, where was it? Well, the fin cooled transformer, no paper encased bypass condensers. All are plastic or ceramic molded. So Zenith really considered these black beauties, uh, you know, as the state of the art, longest lasting. Now these magazines are uh, the Photofax index for what year is this one? Look at this, when transistors first came out, introducing the transistor, 1953. So this is the Photofax uh, index guide and the PF reporter was Sam's Photofax magazine. And there are so many cool articles in these magazines. Um, we'll take a look at this real quick. Capacitor color codes. And this is uh, 1957. So here's a whole article on decoding capacitor color codes. Maybe what I'll do is I'll photograph some of these articles in a higher resolution and I'll uh, put them at the end of the article. A lot of these kind of never go bad. The insulated ceramic disc. So this this explains the term NPO means negative positive zero or a zero temperature coefficient. With this designation capacitance remains constant regardless of temperature change. So, yeah, this, this is the Sam's Photofact magazine. And there was so much good technical information about so many of these kind of common questions in these magazines, these PF reporters. I just photographed the three relevant articles out of these magazines. What I'll do is I'll put them at the, uh, the pictures at the end of the video. They're all broken up so that you'll be able to read the resolution, but they'll be at the end if you're interested in learning reference. This is some OCD hoarding issue right here. What I did is I went and I picked up all the capacitors I need that we went through in part one of the video on the Zenith. And I had some time, so I taped them all down. I separated them all out. And I always get a lot higher quantity than what I need and just hang on to them. That way I have them here in the future for the next project, video, whatever. So I've laid them all out. Here are point ones. Here's our point one at 1600, point 0.015 at 1600, point 0.0068 at 630, point 0.22 at 630. Um, 0.022 at 630, 0 0.047, 0 0.047 at 1600, 
uh, 680 picofarad disc capacitors, 47K resistors, 33K resistors. This is to make up the uh, integrator networks if I need to. And these are 47 microfarad, 350 volt electrolytics for the two that were open up here in the audio circuit. So I'm going to go ahead and recap the set. Uh, I don't need to video that. There's plenty of videos of that. And if I come across anything interesting, I'll stop the video and we'll check it out. And we'll go through the capacity, the old Black Beauties, Bumblebees, and check them and see how they're leaky and screwed up. Maybe they won't be. Who knows? In part one of the video, we determined that the most likely cause of poor vertical deflection and picture wouldn't stop rolling was most likely these capacitors right here. So if you missed video part one, go back and look it up as we go through the diagnosis, firing the TV up and checking out what it does. I'm also going to change that one uh, and that one and that one there. So yeah, Zenith was correct when they said no paper capacitors, all are plastic encased. But what they didn't realize is, you know, plastic... Wait, is this paper right here? Did Zenith lie to us? Maybe that is... Uh, that is ceramic. Interesting. Um, they didn't realize that plastic and epoxy fail and crack over time and leak moisture. And I bet if we really inspect these, we're going to... Like that one right there, is that a crack? These things crack. Well, none of them tested bad. None of them showed any leakage all the way at 450 volts. The only... Uh, issue they were is they were all off value they were all over value uh, and they get lossy so here it is recapped and you can see this is my way of installing them the first thing I do is I bend the lead 90 degrees below it so I don't stress the capacitor then I, I just J-hook them in. I create a mechanical connection and then I solder them. And I'll never, doing this, you'll never break uh, the lead off of a tube socket or anything else. It might not be as pretty as tearing into these solder pots and overheating these resistors and causing them to change value. Anyway, I'm not real happy with this because even this one, which was the boost filter, which I just left there because it has its own cute little holder for aesthetics. Uh, even this one, no leakage at all. And this is what I mean by cracking right here. And this, this is the only one that appears to actually be cracked. The rest of them look fine. So reading this, it's kind of interesting how, how the voltage is on these capacitors. So this one is one, five, three zeros, right? One, five, zero, zero, zero. So it's 0 0.015 and then brown black, which is a thousand volts. Um, this one is blue, gray, red, so 0068, and then red is 2, so 200 volts. Um, this one would be, I believe, white or blue, so this one's 900 volts. Uh, this one's yellow, so it's 400 volts. So 104. So 0.1 at 400 volts. Anyway, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll put this at the end of the video where it talks about reading these things. 
And these right here are some of the other capacitors they talk about reading. This one and that one. I believe these are tubular ceramic. They don't really ever go bad though. Okay, well that does look better. Um, you can see the scan lines, but I have I just turned it on. I haven't adjusted it. I have both the vertical height and linearity cranked all the way up. So I'll wait until it gets a little darker out here and we'll hook the generator up to the IF input on this. And we'll see if we got the vertical fixed and then we'll move on from there. But it does look better and like I've said before, the vertical circuit is very sensitive to out of tolerance capacitors, even if they're not leaky. But we'll see. I didn't see any that were shorted or leaky. Using the VG91 straight into the IF on the set here is what we got right now. I haven't touched it. Uh, so let's see, vertical hold. The vertical hold doesn't want to lock. But let's see, let's pull down on the uh, the linearity and height. What we want to do here is we want a circle, a nice round centered circle. That's not what we want. This is why the circle is so so critical. One of the best alignment tools is a circle. One of the most alignment, best alignment shapes is a circle. Really bright picture. That's pretty good. I typically like to underscan a TV versus overscan it. I don't mind if there's a little black on top and bottom because, uh, of course, the higher you turn the deflection, the more current it pulls through the vertical output tube. So, wow, the vertical The horizontal lock is very weak. This is probably due to bad phase detector diodes. However, there could be an issue in the sink separator circuit. Um, interesting that I can't... I can only... I go... I go one direction, I go the other direction on the vertical, and I can only roll it up. I can't roll it down. That's going to the clockwise, that's going counterclockwise, clockwise. I can't roll it down. That's a trip. This might have a bad integrator. Usually this bad horizontal lock is that phase detector diode, so tomorrow we'll have to change that and see if we can bring that in. turning the level going into the IF up and down. It doesn't seem to make a whole bunch of difference. So,
we're getting there. The vertical lock sucks and the horizontal lock sucks. I don't know if it's two separate things like a bad integrator and a bad phase detector diode or it's uh, an issue like um, a sink separator issue. So there's a couple adjustments down here to the left. One of them is focus, the other is something called fringe lock or sink stability. So I want to tweak on these and see if they make any difference before I change that diode. Okay, well this one makes little to no difference. Well, maybe a little bit. This one's focus, it makes little difference. This one is sink lock. It makes a little difference, but not not enough to be worth it. Um, I need to just replace that double diode first. Hope that fixes it. The vertical seems still kind of soft. It's interesting it's displaying the line here but it's not displaying the line on this side. This is the next thing I'm going to change this horizontal phase detector diode right here. And what I usually use for those, and you can get these out of a computer power supply, is that right there. Motorola Ultra Fast Recovery Rectifier. In this one, uh, this is just this is an old high uh, high frequency switching mode power supply. You just want a diode that you know is pretty pretty fast for here that's good up to at least 15 kilohertz I guess. On this one I might use a couple of these separate MUR diodes, Motorola Ultra Fast Recovery Rectifiers. You probably don't need anything that high current. You could probably use something like that. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull two of these out. I usually use these. And like I say you can get these out of a computer power supply. I don't know if you can see that with the sunlight, but there it is, locked in rock solid. And all I did was I installed one of the two diodes. That's with just one of the two installed, so I'm going to put the other one in right now. There are the new diodes installed. There's the old diode. And... The horizontal is locked in rock solid now. These things should almost just be a, a maintenance item like recapping. I think you should just, if you have this old selenium phase detector, just change it in your TV. One thing I'm seeing here is there's this vibration. I don't know if the camera is showing that. But it's like the whole thing is vibrating vertically real fast. And I wonder if that's from bad integrator. I just ohmed out those two integrators and they seem to be okay. They're not open or super high resistance. The other thing that came up was this capacitor here. The electrolytic for the audio is pretty much open. I'm not going to deal with that right now. What I want to do to complete this video out is I want to get it back in the cabinet. We'll take a look at it, see how it performs, how it looks, and um, I want to play with the remote module a little bit more. I got a piezo high frequency transducer. We'll hook that up to the signal generator or the function generator rather and we'll see what frequency triggers. I think it's in the 40 kilohertz range. I'm going to do some experimenting with the Space Command remote while I'm waiting for it to get dark enough to test the TV. Here's a unique piece of equipment, a Hewlett Packard 5326 frequency counter. This uses Nixie tubes and I don't think I've ever used this before. I picked this up for a few dollars at the swap meet and I thought, ah, oh, this might be fun to test the frequency of this remote control. 
So first thing I'm going to do is pop this open and we'll take a look at the inside of this and I'm going to clean all the controls. So here's taking a look at the inside of the Hewlett Packard Nixie tube. Right there the little Nixie tube display. And it looks like the foam is all the foam on the top here is all breaking down unfortunately. This is what you call American made right here. So what I want to do is I just want to um, just clean all these switches real quick. Man, Hewlett Packard just built absolutely beautiful stuff. Set the date, 73. Absolutely beautifully built. You can see my little tube test adapter socket there. That's the second amp off the microphone. I'm on the plate of the second amp. Then I'm isolated by a capacitor into this. And it looks like this thing is kind of slow, but it looks like this is 40, 38, and 41 kilohertz. So, Forty one point three four, forty point three five, and thirty eight point something. I got another idea. This is a Motorola piezo transducer. They made tweeters out of these for uh, really crappy sounding DJ tweeters, speaker, tweeter, piezo, yeah, they were popular in the 90s. This screws on the back of a horn. What I'm going to do is I'm going to feed my signal generator into this. This might go up to 40 kilohertz. There's our transducer right there. Hooked up to the HP function generator. I keep saying signal generator. You know, there's a couple interesting Zenith Robert Adler interviews. He's the one that invented this on YouTube. And I think I'll include one at the very, very end of the video, a couple of these old commercials, where he talks about developing this and that the frequencies have to be a certain frequency because you have to keep in mind that the flyback is screaming along at 15 uh, kilohertz so or 14 kilohertz so the harmonics of that can't be picked up by this so the frequencies this picks up are uh, very well selected I'll just put it that way specifically selected now if you're wearing headphones if you are wearing headphones or you are sensitive to loud high pitch noises now is the time to turn it down or take it off because it's about to get real okay I'm at 2500 Hertz Five thousand hertz. Ten kilohertz. God, that's harsh. Twelve kilohertz. Fifteen kilohertz, and we're getting some harmonic there. Twenty. So that one clicks in right around 38.925 kilohertz. 
I'm gonna go down. Okay, that one kicks in right around 37, 375 kilohertz, somewhere in there. Now, let me see. Going up. Which one is that? Oh, that's this one. Okay, so this one here is uh, 38423, and they're fairly wide. Okay, I think that's this one. Okay, that one is 41. 4115. They're fairly wide, you know. I'm not. Uh, they're they're probably. I don't know. Let me play with it. Looks like they're about 500 hertz wide. Is the. See if I can get all of this in frame. Because so you're looking at this right here and you're looking at that down there. It just clicked in. I'm dropping the frequency down. So that's where it unlocks. Yeah, they're about 500 hertz wide. So yes, these Motorola Piezo DJ tweeters will go up to 40 kilohertz. You know what? I'm just sitting here looking at this. And what a stupid gimmick this is. This thing doesn't need this. There's no other TV set made that has a... Uh, stupid heat sink that doesn't do anything. I mean, there's n nothing that directly couples the heat sink to the core of the transformer. This isn't going to do hardly anything. This is just something here to keep up with the Joneses to make you think, oh, well, you know, I my transformer has a heat sink. I can't say I've ever seen a, tr a power transformer fail on a 60s or 70s television set. The damn transformer is so oversized anyway, it's not gonna fail. This is, this is fluff. It's a gimmick. Tonight, the horror in New Zealand, the deadly terror attack. A gunman opening fire, killing more than 40 at one mosque, and then going to a second one and opening fire there too. Tonight, what we're just learning about the suspect and what President Trump said moments ago, making news tonight. Our correspondent asking, does he see white nationalism as a rising threat? New Zealand's Prime Minister responding tonight. Here at home, the alarming scene playing out in Los Angeles late today. Panic at the mall, the evacuations amid reports of a man with a gun. Smoke scene coming from the mall, what authorities said a short time ago. Buzz-tastic Zenith by the suspect. Uh, the audio detector. Anders Baring and American Dylan Root, who killed nine people in the Charleston church attack in 2015. Listen to it go. Planning the attack for two years. He also writes about President Donald Trump as a renewed symbol of white identity. The president, meanwhile, has sent his condolences and spoken with New Zealand's prime minister. Oh boy! I told the prime minister that the hate mail is going to start. Them all the way. 100% whatever they need, we will be there. Accelerationism. Jeez, check out what this does between commercials. It's like they have something, something out of adjustment at the broadcast.
What's going on with that? Plus, it's battery operated, so you can have oxygen anytime, anywhere. Imagine the freedom of doing the activities you love, spending more time with family outdoors, even traveling again. Call now for your free information kit. There's no obligation. Energy. Oxygen anytime, anywhere. Call 1 800 532 1899. That's 1 800 532 A little bit of overloading there. Some of this buzzing. What? Is that Gwyneth Paltrow? Some of this buzzing like that right there, that could be due to those bad electrolytics, but I think it's more the detector. Digital. A free life alert brochure from 1 800 961 5656. That's 1 800 961 5656. Call now 1 800 961 5656. So, beautiful picture. Uh, absolutely beautiful picture. Strong CRT. This set is definitely a keeper. I'm going to probably. Uh, eliminate a couple other sets and get this inside tomorrow. A couple Magnavoxes are going to go in the e-waste container. Um, the Buzzomatic detector, that could probably largely be aligned out with um, IF alignment and audio alignment and replacing those two electrolytics, but the picture is just and I'm using a very, very crappy RCA converter box. There's only a few of these converter boxes that are worth the time, and this is not one of them. I mean, the thing to do with this is just to run an audio, uh, a direct line into the 6BQ5 or the preamp before it and just get rid of this whole audio detector thing because this is... Zenith audio detectors are known for this and if the IF is just a little bit out of whack, it'll do what it's doing. If the shoe fits, wear it. Wash, wear it. Here's what they they just get if the shoe fits. Okay, let's try and adjust this audio a little bit. Here's another one. Here's two I love. If the shoe fits. Wear it. Wash it. Wear it. Wash it. Wear it. Wash it. Wear it. You fat. Too many cooks spoil dessert. Too many cooks get into fights, then throw one out. I don't know. I like if your shoe fits, so does your hat. Okay, thank you, uh. As a physician, the bulk of what I do is deliver babies. The experience is minimized by the fact that I'm hiding my teeth. Instead of covering with my hand, I would put the mask on. My smile was no longer there. When Richard came in for his consultation, he didn't want to smile. He was embarrassed. At Clear Choice, we want patients to absolutely walk out of here saying this was the best decision I've ever made. He reassured me very professionally this could be done. Clear Choice is the future between the technology being the touch 3D map.
map out my bone structures and then to custom make the implants and put it in knowing that it can look horrible the duration of my life. Why would I want to have dentures when it was all done? I had my miracle. And that's what I'm saying. Again, I guess what I'm saying. It's almost the end of a what, March 18th? Mm -hmm. You're a Pisces. Yes. My wife is a Pisces. Her, birthday, her, her birthday's birthday. today. Happy, Happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday, Joe. watching at home. Mm -hmm. She may be watching at home. She occasionally watches. I know that. Yeah. I know that. What do you, how do you know that? Because we sometimes talk about it. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> my first guest. What evil lurks in the hearts of men, the shadow knows. <laughs> A generation of Americans grew up listening to this 1935 Zenith radio. It might still be around and still working because it was built to keep on working a long, long time. So is this 1949 Zenith TV. To a lot of people, it became an old friend you could depend on. That's why it stayed around for so many years. Today, the people at Zenith still believe in bringing you products that are worth the money you spend for them. Products you can enjoy listening to and looking at for a long, long time. You see, we want to keep the promise we began making in 1927. At Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on.